Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back to another video. Hope you guys all had a great Christmas. I just released a new video on Christmas Day covering all the new releases from many of the different developers in the scene. So go ahead and check that video out if you haven't already. But what I thought I would do in this video is go over probably the biggest release that's come out over Christmas time. And that is, of course, ETA Hen version 1.9b by Lightning Mods, along with a new version of Items Flow to go along with that version 1.08. So I'm going to go ahead and cover all of the main changes. Of course, there's lots of updates in this version, a lot of stability improvements as well that we'll also touch on. But let's go ahead and look at some of the main differences here from the previous version. Okay, so of course, the main change is support for 1.x and 2.x firmwares that were not previously supported. And of course, we also have support on 3.x to 4.51 as well. So now we've got support all the way from 1.00 firmware up to 4.51. Now, people have been able to run this on 5.x firmwares as well, although it's not explicitly stated that it supports 1.x to 5.x, it's 1.x to 4.x, and that's because we don't have K stuff on 5.x firmwares, which means you're losing most of the main features of ETA Hen if you get it running on a 5.x system, because you can't access PS4 game backups, PS5 game backups, or PS5 homebrew apps. Uh, all you'll really get access to would be the ETA Hen custom toolbox menu in the settings. Now, of course, loading the exploit is going to be different depending on what firmware you're on. If you're on 3.0 to 4.51, you just load it in the normal way. Although it does now have support for the UMTX exploit, which it did not previously have support for. So you can use the older IPv6 exploit or you can use the new UMTX exploit on 3.0 to 4.51. Just go on the browser, load up the exploit of your choice. Once you have the jailbreak running, you can select the payload for ETA Hen and then just give it a few seconds until the notifications disappear and you successfully have ETA Hen loaded. Now, if you're on a 1.x or 2.x firmware, obviously loading it is a little bit different because it runs through the bypervisor exploit from Spectre, in which case what you need to do is load up the web browser as normal, load the jailbreak. Once you have the UMTX exploit running, select the payload. It will then automatically put the system into rest mode. You need to wait a few seconds for the flashing amber light to stop flashing so that it is just a solid amber light, meaning the console has fully entered rest mode. Then you can turn the console back on and then select the option on the exploit for the WebKit only sender, which will skip the exploit and take you straight to the payload selector because you already have the exploit running. And then you can select the ETA Hen payload a second time and that will actually get ETA Hen loaded. Now, during the load up step, it does warn you that it will kind of freeze the screen for a few seconds. So don't worry about that. That is intended behavior. So just give it a few seconds, it will unfreeze and it will load ETA Hen successfully. And that is how you get ETA Hen loaded on both versions. So if we take a look here, if we go into the settings and we'll scroll down to our debug settings, which takes us to the ETA Hen toolbox. So first of all, we've got the plugins. So there's a new option in the plugins. We've got the startup menu and the regular menu. So the regular plugins menu here allows you to just enable and disable plugins directly. So we can just select the option there for Illusions Cheat plugin and it will load it automatically for us. Or we can select it again and it will disable the plugin. And then we also have the startup menu, which allows you to select a plugin to load automatically on ETA Hen startup. That way you don't have to manually go into the plugins menu and start enabling the plugins one by one. You can just have the ones you want enabled automatically when ETA Hen launches. So those are the differences between those two menus there. Then we have the remote play option here. This will allow you to connect a remote device. It gives you the pin code, but it will also give you your account ID as a base64 string, which is needed for third party remote play clients like Chaki to be able to connect to the console. So you can use that to connect your remote devices, which is very handy. Then we also have the utility section. And in here, we've got a new external HDD menu. And this will give you access to unmount and mount your external hard drive, as well as format the external hard drive and give you the format version of the external hard drive as well. Then we have the extras menu. In here, there's a couple of options from the regular debug settings that you might want to have access to, like the NP environment and add content manager. So that has also been included there in the ETA Hen toolbox. Then we have the light mode option here, kills all ETA Hen services and plugins. So it's a case stuff or hen only mode. So this is for people who are experiencing instability issues with ETA Hen, where like the menus are crashing or the uh, ETA Hen itself is crashing or slowing down the system significantly, causing lag in your games and various other problems. Hopefully that's less of an issue now with this new version, but 
if you are still running into those issues, you might want to enable this mode, which basically simplifies everything and just gives you kernel stuff and the homebrew enabler with nothing else enabled to try and be as lightweight as possible. As I also recommend, it's a good idea in the services section to uncheck and disable any services that you're not actively using so that you're not putting as much strain on the system as well. This isn't as much of a problem for 1.x and 2.x firmwares because we have the hypervisor uh, bypass essentially. So we've got direct kernel patches, so it's not really a, much of a problem there. But when it comes to 3.x to 4.51, you're relying on the lib hijacker, which can be slowed down by having to handle lots of different things at once. So disabling anything you don't use can help to avoid those instability issues and slowdowns. So I would also recommend disabling anything you're not actively using. We also have the test kit menu here. And this is, of course, only for test kits right now, although this might eventually come over to retails in a future version. But this is for the overlay stuff uh, that you can enable on test kit consoles. So those are the obvious things that have been added in this new version. There have been a lot of subtle changes in the background as well to smooth out the operation of ETA Hen. For example, the plugins no longer rely on the ELF loader. Installing the homebrew store is now handled asynchronously, so it doesn't kind of freeze the menu waiting for the homebrew store to install. So that's been improved. And then also the ETA Hen daemon loads a lot faster. It used to be five to six seconds and now loads within one second, which makes everything a lot smoother. You'll notice when running homebrew apps, they seem to uh, open a lot faster. They run a lot faster. Just the general smoothness and speed of everything in ETA Hen feels a lot more responsive now than it did before. Those are the main changes in ETA Hen across the board, although there are a few specific things for 2.x firmwares. But let's go ahead and check out the new version of Items Flow. So first of all, if you don't have Items Flow installed already, you can get it from the Homebrew Store. If you don't have the Homebrew Store installed, of course, we can just select it from the ETA Hen toolbox, provided your PS5 is connected to the internet and it will automatically download the homebrew store for you. And then once that's installed, so we'll select the homebrew store and you can see how much faster it opens. You know, the ETA hen granted a jailbreak pops up immediately and we're already up and running with the homebrew store. I love how much faster this loads as well compared to the PS4. So all we're gonna do now is select items flow and we'll download and install the latest version there of items flow. And once items flow finishes installing and it says it's ready to use, we can just hit the options button to close out of the homebrew store. And now we have items flow ready that we can also launch. So that is what we like to see. And we now have this up and running. So there haven't really been that many changes added to this new version of items flow. The main difference that you'll notice across all firmwares is that there's now been a check added to make sure that game executables are fake signed upon launch. And we also have updated versions of Illusions Cheats that have been added in this version as well. So those are the only real changes across the board. The thing about checking to see if the game executables are fake signed, that's for your game dumps. When you dump a PS5 game, the executables are decrypted. If you just try and immediately run that in items flow, it will not work because the executables need to be fake signed. So this just adds an extra check so that if they're not fake signed, it will tell you that so that you know that there's an issue with your game dump and that's why it's not working. If you want to know how to properly make PS5 game dumps, I do have a tutorial on that that I made around this time last year that goes over the entire process, including how to fake sign the executables. But anyway, that's the main changes that have been made there. But what we do have is for 2.xx only, we have added game decryption support to the items flow dumper. That allows you to dump games like Demon Souls and Devil May Cry 5 and other games where the previous decryptor would not work. The downside though is that this is only for 2.xx firmwares. So you're only going to be able to decrypt games like Demon Souls and Devil May Cry 5 if you're on 2.xx firmware because this change has not been implemented into 3.x up to 4.51 for whatever reason. I guess it might require the bypervisor exploit in order for it to work. The good news though, if you're on higher firmwares like 3.0 to 4.51, is that people on 2.x firmwares have already dumped and decrypted these games. And once they're decrypted, there's nothing stopping you from running those decrypted versions on your 3.x and 4.51 systems. So even though you can't dump your own copies, uh, anybody else's copies that have already been dumped, you will be able to run those on your 3.x to 4.51 uh, consoles. So it's only if you want to decrypt those games yourself 
that you're not going to be able to do it if you're not on a 2.x firmware right now. So for example, I was able to dump my European copy of Demon's Souls on my 2.30 system and then I was able to turn that into a playable backup that I was able to load on my 4.03 system with an older version of Items Flow uh, when I was testing this a little while ago. So yeah, you can definitely run those decrypted games on those higher firmwares even though you can't decrypt them on those firmwares themselves. And then also for 2.xx only, we have added support for a directory depth patch. Uh, this is another kind of strange issue here where the console only looks a certain number of directories for files. I think it's like seven or eight directories deep. And that's fine if everything's in like a container or a package file or something like that. But if it's not, if it's in its decrypted format, and obviously when we run games, uh, PS5 game dumps, we're running them in their decrypted form. And because of that, we have this directory depth issue where some files for the game might be more than seven or eight directories deep. Since we have a hypervisor bypass on 2.x firmwares, we've got this directory depth patch, which I assume just patches it so that it can look in deeper directories than seven or eight directories deep so that you will not have those issues on a 2.x firmware console. But there is one other thing to mention besides this that's also only for, I believe, 2.xx firmwares, 2.xx decryption through FTP. So you basically have self a self-decryptor built into FTP now, the same way it works on the PS4 with Gold Hen. So whenever you transfer a executable for a game over, for example, when you run a game, it gets loaded into the sandbox directory. So you have all of the game files and you can actually just dump the game by copying all of the game files from the sandbox directory through FTP over to your computer and that gets you a dump of the game but it never decrypted the executable files so that dump was essentially useless you wouldn't be able to run it at any point but what it can do now is it will automatically decrypt the executables like the SCE modules and the eboot.bin whenever you transfer one of those executable files over to your computer it gets automatically decrypted and then the decrypted version gets transferred over to your computer so that effectively means that you could dump PS5 games through FTP instead of using Items Flow if you wanted to. So that is another option that's only available for 2.x firmwares right now. And just handy as well if you want to analyze the executables, you can just drag and drop an executable from FTP and it will automatically decrypt it and transfer it to your computer so that you can analyze the decrypted version. All across the board, a great update uh, from Lightning Mods. Now, there are some issues at the moment with people on certain firmwares, particularly some 3.x firmwares, I think, having issues right now uh, with ETA Hen not loading correctly. Um, I'm sure Lightning Mods will resolve those issues. I think he was mostly focused on 1.x and 2.x firmware support in this version and may not have had enough time to fully test out versions 3.0 up to 4.51. So if you are having any problems with ETA Hen right now, I recommend just waiting a little bit for Lightning Mods to release a new version that will fix some of these little issues. So anyway, that's it for this one. Hope you guys enjoyed this video or found the information useful. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. And once again, I'll hopefully see you guys in the next video.